This video is a brief walk-around video for the Siglent SPS 5000X series, High Power Programmable Switching DC Power Supplies. We will go through the complete menu system, front panel interfaces, and connections using this SPS 5008-2X. First, press the menu and select System. We can click Version to view the system configuration, including the version info, model information, and more. We can view and update the default setting using the second menu item. We can adjust a setting like the key sound buzzer by selecting the menu item using the knob push function and then using the knob turn or press functions to update menu settings like this. Here we have chosen to turn on the key sound. Control the front panel operation in this way. Press the knob to select it and then select the function by rotating the knob. The fourth is upgrade. The update needs to be operated by connecting a USB flash drive. You can always download the latest instrument firmware at www.siglintna.com. Access new features, bug fixes, and more with up-to-date software. Save it to a USB flash drive, and then plug it in here to update the firmware using this menu. The fifth one is MS Mode Settings. Two or three power supplies can be connected in series or parallel to extend the output capabilities. You can configure this instrument to act as a master or slave unit in a grouping from this interface. The sixth menu item is Board Test. This menu makes it possible to test the hardware and interface functionality. The first item is LED. This illuminates the front panel lighted buttons. The second is the self-test of keyboard for the buttons themselves, followed by the sound test and chip hardware test. Those functions are all in the main system menu. Now let's look at the configure menu where you can set the main functions of the power supply. The first option is protect. The SPS 5000X has over voltage protection and over current protection that can be set and activated in this menu. The second one is shunt. The third one is operating mode. The operating mode configures the supply to either quickly move to the set voltage or to follow the slew rate timing setting for rise or fall actions. The slew rate timing is set in this menu item as well in volts.sec for voltage rise and fall separately for increased flexibility. The fourth is output delay. The fifth is output resistance. The sixth is measure average. These also add flexibility to the instrument configuration when activated. Set the timing delay in seconds and the output resistance in ohms in these menus. The seventh one is voltage control. For more automated test configurations, the power supply can be set to vary the voltage or current output based on voltage or resistance values connected to the rear panel. This simplifies dynamic control of the output for industrial applications. Set the local or external control modes in the voltage and current control menu, respectively. Use the EXT on OFF menu to activate the output via the rear analog interface pins. This disables the output button on the front panel. The output configuration is complete. Now we can check the communication menu. This menu contains information for connecting to the instrument for computer control. The USB menu shows the Visa USB address for the device. The GPIB menu allows you to set the instrument's GPIB address. This operates with an additional hardware module that connects the USB port to the GPIB bus. The LAN menu makes it possible to configure the network device settings, including IP address, subnet, and gateway addresses. It also indicates the MAC address of this network interface card for identification. These can all be set as static values, but it is recommended to use the DHCP mode, which will automatically set then when connected to a network with an active DHCP router. This menu also show the instrument temperature in case of overheating. Now that we have looked through all the menu items, let's take a look at the main front panel interface using the set button. Here we can set the actual voltage and current levels for the output. Use the right and left arrow keys to change position relative to the decimal point. If you want to set the current after setting the voltage, press the Set button again, and then you can select the current on the right. The List button shows the read-time display of the list-based output setting. 
To edit the setting, press the knob to select it. Now we can edit the list configuration, including the number of loops, steps per loop, the voltage, current, delay, hold time, and slew rate mode of each step. Once the instrument is set for automated operation, you can activate the lock function. This illuminates the lock button and keeps the supply configuration from being changed accidentally from the front panel. You press and hold the lock button to unlock the front panel. The recall button manages the internal and USB storage operation of the instrument. Save setups to locations within the instrument using the internal save mode and use external save mode to access a USB drive. Select and activate these menu items using the knob. Push the recall button again to toggle between save and recall modes. Well, that's the introduction of the front panel. Finally, let's look at the rear panel. The ribbon cable socket is the external control connector. This is the output and sense terminal. Use these bolt points for large gauge wire that can handle the voltage and current of the output. Be careful not to touch or short these connections when in operation mode as safety is paramount. Read the operating manual for complete safety usage guidelines. The rear panel also includes the USB device connector, exhaust fan, ethernet port, and power connector. Thanks for joining us for this walk-around video on the SPS 5000X series.